this is Herman Brooks. Herman is just like the rest of us. Every day he has to make all kinds of decisions. Like what to wear, whom to date, and when to panic. Now, these decisions should be easy, but if you take a look inside Herman's head, you'll see why he sometimes has trouble making up his mind. I'm Herman's intellect. Without me, he couldn't hold his job, pay his rent, or tie his shoes. I'm Herman's sensitivity. Without me, he wouldn't feel tenderness, honesty, or love. The good things in life. Oh, I'm Herman's anxiety, and I keep him out of trouble. And believe me, there's trouble everywhere. I'm Herman's lust. Without me, he'd miss out on all the good stuff. You know, fun, food, babes. Sometimes they agree. Usually they don't. But this struggle is going on inside all of us. And it's all going on inside Herman's head. Editorial, tell them I need those articles yesterday. Cancel my 1045, move my facial to 1115. What's the name of that associate editor? Fleckman? Fire Fleckman. <laughs> Call Crawford, tell him I need a new associate editor. All right, let's see, move the layout meeting to 1115. No, what do I have at 1115? The facial. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not saying you need one. I... Uh, move my layout meeting to 11.45 and book me a table at Elaine's at 12.30. Uh, that suit looks good on you. Take all my meetings on Wednesday. <laughs> what do you think, Louise? You like my new nails? I just got them yesterday. Oh, my God! One of them is missing! <laughs> Hello, Harry. I'm missing a nail. Did I leave one in your back last night? <laughs> well, could you check? <laughs> Hetty, you seem a little tense this morning, and my therapist said you should always release tension with an audible sound. <laughs> Louise, has it ever occurred to you that your therapist might be playing a long series of jokes on you? You know, you could use a little fine-tuning yourself, babe. You've got some mate. <laughs> Point of the is, Hetty. Herman, I want you to check the article on... Paul Bracken? That's right. Who are you? Bracken, that's Victoria Stark, editor of She Magazine. She's the most powerful woman at Waterton Publishing. She's cold, ruthless, cutthroat. I'm sorry, I get all gushy in front of a role model. <laughs> so you're Victoria Stark. It's nice to shake your claw. <laughs> Enough small talk. I need one of your people to help me with my magazine today. Well, if it's only for today, Hetty, Herman, Louise, you're all capable. Interview each of them. Make your choice. So, who are you? What about you? What's your magazine experience? Well, I only posed that one time, but I swear they were very tasteful. <laughs> and you? This is big. We can nail this job if you all do exactly what I say. You, give us one of those big, sappy smiles. You, don't look at her breasts. You, open your mouth. Didn't I tell you not to look at her breasts? Hey, they're looking at me. Well, feel like working hard? You bet. Be in my office in five minutes. That was blatant sexual discrimination. She just walked right in here and picked Herman. Do you know why, Louise? Yes, because you confessed your sordid past and I sounded like I was on Wild Kingdom. <laughs> Then there's the fact that Herman is an extremely capable and hard worker. Wrong. It's because he's a man. Well, I'm not going to stand for this. I'm reporting it to that National Organization of Women, whatever it's called. You mean now? Yes, now. This can't wait. <laughs> hey, Herman. You talk J. Destiny calls. Okay, I'll walk you to the junk. <laughs> yeah, not that Destiny, J. I just got a huge break. I'm going to spend the day working with Victoria Stark. Victoria Stark? Hermo. I know about this woman. She is tough. When Tchaikovsky wrote The Nutcracker, he had her in mind. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Jay. I can take care of myself. Hermo, you'll be working on She Magazine. You'll be surrounded by nothing but women writers and women editors looking at bra and panty ads. Herman, take me with you. Herman! Look, I'm on a deadline. I need that story. 
Don't give me alibis, Richard. So you had a stroke right with your left hand. <laughs> All right, let's go over everything we've done today. Okay, I checked the photo captions and I wrote all the pull quotes. Good, good. This is very good. Oh, and I also proofed the Conklin article during lunch. How was it? Bread was a little stale. I think the mayonnaise was bad. <laughs> it's Flegman. What's he want? He didn't take the firing too well. He's crying. <laughs> Hello, Fleckman. Unless you can top a stroke, we got nothing to talk about. We are getting a look at power up close and personal. Let's not get too close. I think this woman bites. I hope this woman bites. Listen to me, Lugnut. We are trying to establish a professional relationship here. So what am I supposed to do? Take a number. Wait in line. <laughs> number 88. Now serving number five. <laughs> Grow up, Fleckman. Anything else for me? That dinner party starts in an hour. Damn, I've got to change my clothes. Um, oh, well, I, I guess I'll be going back down to research. Oh, sit down. We're not finished yet. Now, listen. Make sure that all of the freelance material goes through fact-checking and is on my desk for tomorrow. Uh, call accounting. Make sure that we get the newsstand results. And find out if that cartoonist plans on running a strip in this issue. Did you get that last part? Something about a strip? Yeah. Oh. I want you to check on this one piece. See where he's at. Well, there's your up close and personal. She is just in a rush. All executives change in their offices. Yeah, right. This broad wants us. This broad's name is Victoria, and she does not want us. Oh, yeah? So how come we got our face buried in Victoria's secret? <laughs> That's it. Check that one. Oh, and, and make sure that all the articles that need to be proofread are done, you know, so we can go to print. Okay, I'll make sure this is on your desk tomorrow, too. Listen, uh, thanks for giving me this chance to work with you today. Oh, I don't know about this dress. Be honest, how do I look? I think you look great. <laughs> Let's see how you feel. This is your only warning, professional. Do you understand? Well, it sure works for me. What do you mean by that? Well, I, I mean, it looks sexy. It's, it's a hot outfit. You, you, I mean, you look... You look uh... Thanks for your help today, sir. See, see, when I say hot, what I, what I mean was... <laughs> Going to put you on a leash! I called a lot of women's organizations, but you were the first one to show up. As an attorney for the National Women's Alliance, it's my job to look into any cases of sexual discrimination. After all, this may be the 90s, but we've still got a lot of work to do. So... Well, my case is simple. This bitch editor comes in, <laughs> says she needs help. Well, all you had to do was look at her to know she needed help. I mean, the woman couldn't dress herself to save her life. <laughs> I mean, yes, her clothes were expensive, but come on, a skirt that tight with a butt like hers? What exactly is your complaint? My complaint is that she picked a man over me, and that's not fair. I've paid my dues here, lady. I've had to hop in the sack with some pretty sleazy guys this company. And what has it gotten me? Zippo. Well, I guess I'm done here. <laughs> what is her problem? I think she realized that you're not the poster girl for feminism. <laughs> Tell me about Victoria Stark, man. Did you sleep with her? Jay, we're talking about a very intelligent, powerful executive. Did you sleep with her? I got a chance to watch a dynamic, fascinating woman at work. Oh, okay. Did you sleep with her? Jay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got a one-track mind. So, those are breasts. I wouldn't know. Oh, come on. You must have at least done one of those sweeping glances. I'm only going to say this once. This woman is 15 years older than me, and I was just working for her. Why, why would I look at her that way? Maybe it's because we are experiencing the thrill of Victoria on the wide world of cleavage. <laughs> Maybe it's because you are an ignorant, vile, horny swine. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't rule that out. 
Jay, there are certain occasions when it's better not to think about having sex with someone. Sure there are. Family reunions. <laughs> Hello, Herman. I wonder if you could work for me again today. I can work for you today, Miss Stark. Uh, sorry, I need Herman. I see. Sure, I'd be happy to help you. You said you only needed him one day. Don't make this difficult, Paul. I'm on a deadline. I'll see you up there. Yes, they're real, and if I catch you staring at them one more time, I'll have you fired. <laughs> Held the sweeping glance a little too long. You be careful with her, Herman. Don't worry, sir. I can handle myself. We'll see. Herman, this stinks. Hetty, I'm sorry. I guess Victoria just likes my work. But she likes a lot more than that. Oh, Hetty, unlike you, Herman has morals. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a victim of discrimination. I'm going to do something about it. Here we go. Women opposed to male persons. Womp. <laughs> oh, there are two women in my group therapy from Womp. Pretty serious. Last Christmas I brought in cookies. During the break, they neutered all the gingerbread men. <laughs> and I rewrote the leads on these two articles. I added two photos to this feature story. Um, what else? That's it. You've saved me again. For the past two days, you've done a wonderful job, Herman. Well, I gotta tell you, this kind of work is exactly why I came to New York. Tell me something, Herman. What do you want to do? Do? Yes, what do you want to do with your career? Oh, oh, uh, I'd like to write. Oh, these shoes are killers. Do me a favor, rub my feet. <laughs> rub my feet? Is that going a tad beyond the job description? Then I say we go beyond. <laughs> Beyond the feet, beyond the calf, beyond the thigh, onward, toward the I'm glad you want to write, but I think you should consider editing. In fact, I have an opening for a new associate editor. I'm recommending you for the job. Associate editor, you see? Act professional, and you get professional. Associate editor? We'll talk about it tomorrow. It's late. Okay. <laughs> Before you go, I want you to do some last-minute things for me. Yeah, sure. I'm sleeping tonight on the sofa. Would you clear it off for me? Right. And when you're finished with that, would you mind unhooking my dress? It's impossible for me to reach. <laughs> no problem. One last thing. Kiss me. <laughs> Number 88, I think I'm next. cheerful about me nothing in particular maybe it's because we spent the night boffing one of new york's most powerful broads <laughs> how can we go along with this i think she bit us it's only fair we bit her first wow herman you got to spend two whole days with victoria stark she must really like you yeah i think it's pretty suspicious what is? I don't listen to her. She's got it in her head. There's something going on between you and Victoria. It's a clear case of penis envy. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. I read it in a book in high school once. I've been trying to work it into conversation ever since. Hey, what are you getting at? All I'm saying is it looks an awful lot like someone in this office is sleeping his way to the top. Not Herman. He is the most decent man I know. And he would no more sleep his way to the top than Earl here. 
Well, okay, bad example. <laughs> Wake up, Earl, you lazy bastard! <laughs> Herman, I just got a call from Victoria Stark. She was highly complimentary of your performance. Pardon? She wants to work with you again today. She said I'll be done with him in 15 minutes. She said that. I hope you know what you're doing, Herman. Eddie Newman? Yes? I'm Jen. I'm Pat. We're, We're from, from Womp. Womp. Well, it's that time. You the scum who took her job? Excuse me? Yes, that's him. So go ahead. Throw some animal blood on him. Wrong group. Let's go talk strategy. Aren't you Jay Nichols? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. I must have been really drunk. <laughs> Come here, Jay. Jay, can you keep a secret? No. Well, try. I don't want anyone else in the office to know about this. Um, I slept with Victoria Stark. No. <laughs> it was incredible. I even got seven hickeys to prove it. Look, plus, she's talking about giving me an editorial job. Now, what I want to know is, are people going to think I got the job because I slept with the boss? How many hickeys? <laughs> Jay, I need your advice. Okay, so you're making career moves, and you're getting to sleep with a beautiful woman. And this bothers you. Yes. Snap out of it, man. Hi. I'll be with you in a sec. Um, what exactly did you want to see me for? I thought we finished work yesterday. We did. But there's always more. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, today we're going to be a bit more rushed. I've got a meeting in 15. You get undressed, I'll go get ready. Congratulations, we're a slut. We are not a slut. We are simply a... A kept woman. Well, we will not allow someone to use our body at will. What downward angel? We're a guy, and guys spend their lives dreaming of being used by babes. What if somebody finds out? Oh, how is anyone going to find out? Give this to her, would you, Ace? Will do. Tell her I'm taking my lunch. Your secretary brought this in. L uh, listen, Victoria, I am not altogether comfortable with Good this. Good news, thing. Herman. You got the job as my associate editor. You do? Now, what were you saying? Yeah. Oh, look, I, I was just saying that... We can't go through with this. Look, sweetheart, she's leading this dance. If she wants to... Whoa! Oh, I, I was saying that I, I think this isn't the right place. Do you want to do this or not? I do, I do. But let's face it. I mean, I'd be pretty embarrassed if it got back to my co-workers what's going on up here. You're getting a little paranoid, aren't you? Miss Stark, Paul Braggin. Herman, I need to speak to Ms. Stark in private. <laughs> in private, Herman. Whatever you have to say can be said in front of Herman. All right, I'll say it in plain English. Herman's a good kid, but he's naive. He doesn't always know when someone's taking advantage of him. You either hire him or send him back to research, but stop jerking him around. Am I jerking you around, Herman? Nope. No, not figuratively. <laughs> Anything else, Paul? No, that's it. I've said my piece. And oh, Herman, pick up your pants, son. They're getting wrinkled. Great. My boss knows. Your former boss. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's someone whose respect I value. Now he's going to think I got this new job just so you can have some stud. Don't get carried away, Herman. I hired you on the basis of your marriage. Yeah, but the people I work with don't know that. Herman, Mr. Brett. <laughs> I know this is hard to believe, but I'm here on my merits. Aren't your merits getting a little cold right now? Stark, I want to talk to you. Who are you? I'm Hattie Newman, and you took Herman over me because I am a woman. So you're going to give me an interview or else. Are you challenging me? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Give it your best shot. I'll take this directly to my friend, Frank Taylor, who sits on the board of directors. 
Frank Taylor doesn't just sit on the board of directors. He also sits on my lap and calls me a mummy. <laughs> you lose, kid, but I like your style. It's mine. Call my secretary. I'll give you an interview. Whoa! <laughs> Herman, I'll need an answer about that job tomorrow. Thank you, Carl. Yes, they are nice legs, and yes, they do go all the way up to my neck. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Well, Eddie, so much for feminism, huh? Louise, feminism is like a man. It served me well, now I'm done with it. Morning, Hetty. Hi, Louise. So, Herman, you're back? Uh, no, actually, I'm just getting my stuff. I'm going to work for Victoria. No kidding. Yeah, it's great. She's, she's got a really interesting position for me. I hope you're double-jointed. Well, Herman, are you with us? Uh, no, sir. I'm accepting Victoria's job offer. Oh, I see. Well, if that's your decision, good luck. Yes, sir. That's my decision. Because I earned that job. And frankly... I don't care what you people think or what anyone else thinks about me taking the job. If I want to take the job, I'll take the job. Victoria, I'm not taking that job. <laughs> but if I had taken the job, I would have felt damn fine about it. Well, there are a lot of trap doors on the path to success. You just fell through one. I did. Now, take this down the editorial for me. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Herman! Congratulations. My respect for you is restored. <laughs> At least it will be as soon as I can wipe from my memory the hideous image of you in black socks and boxers. Thanks, Louise. You can always change your mind and call her back. That suit looks good on you. Cancel by 145. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> what do Daryl Strawberry, Roger Clemens, Steve Sachs, Don Mattingly... ...that he's doing up next, it's the Paul Rodriguez special on WWCP Fox Channel 8. And Homer Simpson have in common? They'll all be playing on the same team this Thursday on a Grand Slam Simpsons. It's all part of the Fox Summer Games next week. Now, stay tuned for Paul Rodriguez next.